share this with you as I bring to close this series of sermons that is found in Matthew chapter 10. I've been talking about the job description, having us look at what God has called believers to understand. I talk about the job description first week and then we know that we have power. Talk about the job description to remind us of our parameters that we have. Talk about the job description that we always understand our purpose. Talk about the job description that we might understand that God has given us prospects. And today I want to just share with you that the job description has a promise. God for your glory, use me, I pray in Jesus' name. In, amen. The scripture reads in Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 and 22. Now, brother will deliver a brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. The job description has a promise. My brothers and sisters, as we embrace Christ in our lives, we are charged with telling others about the good news of our Savior. It's kind of hard to receive the blessings and not be willing to bless somebody else, nor to encourage somebody else to be in touch with God so that they might experience the blessings for themselves. This series of sermons really has focused on our relationship with God and understanding how God works in our lives when he calls us and we answer to the call. When we say yes to the yes that the Lord has already said to us, we're saying in essence, Lord, I will go with you all the way. We find on the journey that too many are thinking that because you're Christian, you won't have any trials and tribulations. Too many of us think that because we're Christian that everything is going to be rosy. That we'll never have any problems, we won't have any challenges, we won't have any ups and downs, we won't have folk working against us. I got news for you. In the world in which we live in, Christians are under attack as well as others who are under attack for whatever reason it may be. But God is trying to say to those who have said, I will carry the message of Christ that there will be times on your journey that things will not be as you want them to be. When we look at our people and our history of our people, God has been the one to see us through. We are beneficiaries of those who prayed for us, whose our foreparents died by lynching, our foreparents who died by all unjust means, but they prayed for their children that God would bless them and keep them safe and provide for them. And here we are these years later. We're not dying on a, a, a cross, if you will, but there's some things that are going on in our society that lets it be known that evil is at work, trying to destroy the lives of those who would only trust God. There are, there's evil working in our world that we need to understand that God is trying to make us ready so we're able to handle what comes before us. Look at the text. Now, brother will deliver a brother to death and a father his child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. Is that not what's happening today? Here we are, and here we are 2,000 years later, the land of the free right now today in 
in Washington, D.C., there are people who are spewing hatred in the land of the free and the home of the brave. There are people who are spewing hatred simply because of the color of their skin. Some think because of white privilege and because your skin is brown and black that you're not worthy of anything. I got, you, I got news for you. This is the real world in which we are living that the Bible addresses from two as a believer, so often we say yes to the Lord, and we haven't read the fine print. The fine print of the job description lets me know people will lie on you, they'll talk about you, you'll be hated, you try to do good, they'll try to tear you down. See, that's in the fine print. And many times we don't read the fine print, we just want God to bless us without understanding that we may have to go through some things, but the word of God is clear. We look at brothers killing one another today. We are looking at it right now, every day, on the news, something crazy going on, how children and parents are getting along, and parents kill their children, and children can do the same to their parents. We look at our world, sisters, our black sisters fighting one another, our black brothers fighting one another. Look Has a promise. 
And what is this cross? The word of God says, if you hang in there until the end, you shall be saved. Yes. But whatever they do, the word of God tells me that I will be saved. I find joy in that because it does get crazy out here. Families get crazy, friends get crazy, the world gets crazy, but I do what God calls me to do. When it comes my time, I know that the Lord has a place prepared for me. And as I wrestle this text, I have to look at how Jesus is able to speak these words to help the disciples along the way. I can imagine Jesus saying to his disciples, just follow my life. And there's some things that you'll recognize as to what I'm talking about. Jesus taught his disciples. He ministered to them. But yet and still people lied on him. They talked about him. They spat on him. They ran him out of town. They led him to a place called Calvary. They put him on a tree. Put nails in his hands. Put nails in his feet. Put nails, spear in his side. A crown of thorns on his head. But the word says if you do it to the end, you shall be saved. They took Jesus, hung him between earth and sky, and he bled and died and was put down from the cross, placed in a borrowed tomb. But the word of God says, but if you hang in there until the end, you shall be saved. Come on, help me, God. I'm trying to understand the text here. Jesus, God, if you ever read the rest of the story, on the third day morning, God did something. God sent angels down. God has somebody to move the tombstone away. And when the people went to go look at this dead Jesus, they found out he was not there. As a matter of fact, somebody had to say, look here, what are you looking for, Jesus? He's not here. He's risen as he said. Don't you know that God raised Jesus alive on that third day morning? And Jesus showed himself alive for 40 days before he went to heaven. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help somebody today. God will see you through. God will bless you. God will hold you up. You may have to shed tears. You may get knocked down. People may lie on you. But hang in there. Because the word of God says you shall be saved. I don't know about you, but my joy is when I think about how good God is. I get joy when I think of how God has angels to wrap himself all around me. I get joy. Yeah.
your chair. Let everybody sit. Amen. Amen. I woke up this morning. 